All right, so I just want to do this quick video here comparing uh, two different uh, brands of uh, brass shot shells um, or, or holes. And that's this one here on the left, which is the uh, Magtech brass, two and a half inch. These are, these are 32 gauge. Now, um, I've kind of been looking around uh, a bit in, into these holes lately since I got into uh, to loading them just very recently. And uh, this one is, is pretty much the only one um, I was able to find like on YouTube. Um, I, I don't see any other videos with other brass. Uh, at least I haven't found them. Now the irony kind of of all this is I didn't really have any intentions of uh, loading these brass hulls, but uh, I found some of these, uh, these Magtech ones for super cheap um they come in these boxes of 25 up here and i i picked up two of them on auction and it came out to i think um like six bucks a box before uh before shipping at least so uh it was just so little money i'm like hey why not um of course the irony is that i kind of got um kind of got sucked into um the ins and outs of of trying to make these work in terms of the fitment with components you look here, um, it's uh, very thin walled, this brass. Actually, uh, if you sort of measure the opening here, it's um, kind of what you probably consider like a 30 gauge as opposed to a 32. Um, that's how thin the, uh, the brass is. So that presents some challenges in terms of uh, fitting wads and, and whatnot in there, overshot cards. And that kind of led me to this guy right here, which is a Rocky Mountain Cartridge RMC uh, 32 gauge hole. And I really wanted to find a video that kind of offered a side-by-side -side comparison of the two, just in the hand, and I couldn't find one. So I'm like, okay, I'll make one now that I have both. Um, and you can see how well that picks up, but you can see how much thicker the RMC hole is, the, this one on the left here. Uh, much, much thicker, which therefore means you can use the appropriate, uh, in this case, 32 gauge components, uh, wads and, and cards to, uh, to work in here. Of course, the other really cool thing about this, the reason I got it, uh, despite being several times more expensive uh, than this, even, you know, these are a good, these uh, Magtech are a good deal even when they're just normal price, which is about about a buck fifty a, uh, a hole, which is, is by far the cheapest you can find. These are, um, you know, I hate to admit it, these are about seven or eight times more expensive. But when you have them in hand, um, you know the the quality just kind of just kind of jumps out at you. Um, I mean, there's just no contest here. This one's much heavier. Uh, you could just tell it's uh, this is actually a machine from uh, from uh, solid bar stock, um, and so it, the the quality is is just uh, it's it's really amazing. Um, I really almost don't even feel worthy to uh, <laughs> to hold it in my hand. Um, and the other nice thing about this too is these use a two hundred nine primer, standard shotgun primer. I've got a, a Winchester one there. I've uh, uh, primed on my. Uh, uh, my press so and of course these do not take a shot shell primer they take a large pistol primer so depending on availability you know that could certainly be an issue to uh, factor in trying to determine which one is going to be the best the best fit um, but when we you know I've got a plastic wad here 32 gauge wad uh, this is a sporting wad uh, basically the only commercially available 32 gauge wad you can find. You know, when you drop it, try to drop it in here, it just falls right in, as you can see. Okay, there's huge, huge gaps around it. And in fact, I can just tip it over and it'll slide out maybe. Actually, it's kind of stuck in there. There we go, all right. Uh, not a very good fit, not a very tight fit. Now by contrast, this, this one does go in there kind of Somewhat easy too, but it actually has a little bit of resistance. It actually is going to seat and fit a lot better in there. Yeah, and that one won't just shake loose. So I'm not gonna let it go down in there because then I'd have to 
I'd have to pry it out of there. So um, really, really nice feature then of the RMC brass is the fact that uh, um, it, is, it is true to size for the gauge. Okay. You know, the other nice thing too is with the 209 primers and just the height of where the primer sits, a uh, big problem with these MagTech ones is, you know, the flash hole is, uh, let's say, about in this region here. And the rim around it is, uh, is, is empty. So meaning, you know, part of your powder charge is going to sit below the primer. Um, and these don't have any base wads, so that, that creates a bit of an issue. Um, by contrast, uh, the, the, the bottom, the floor basically of the hole here is completely level with, uh, with the, the, uh, the end of the, the 209 primer here. So you kind of avoid that issue. Um, does that add up to being, you know, worth 10, 10 times more than this one? I don't know. That's, that's kind of a decision you'd have to make when determining which, uh, which kind of brass hole, uh, you want to use, but, uh, no mistake, uh, this, this one is, um, uh, is just head and shoulders, um, just a nicer, a nicer product for sure. Um, I have already loaded up a, a few of these. These are actually all the MagTech, uh, MagTech brass. I, I haven't tested any of these yet, so we'll see what, uh, any of this amounts to. It could amount to nothing, and, uh, I've loaded up one of the, uh, uh, one of the, uh, RMC ones as well, uh, now, the cool thing about this is a 32 gauge I was able to get uh, really without a problem with the plastic wad a three quarter ounce load in here. So this is basically uh, kind of like a standard 28 gauge load I was able to get in this guy because of the, uh, the two and three quarter inch uh, length. Uh, so that um, that's pretty exciting. Uh, so we'll see. I'll, I'll test these here pretty soon and uh, get an idea of what kind of velocities I'm getting uh, and what kind of patterns I can get out of them. All right, until next time.